um, Shrikant, you've been an Inc. Fellow, told our, your story of uh, how you could not take a math test because, uh, you know, if you're blind, you're not allowed to apply for uh, technology courses, etc. How you fought the system, and an amazing story. So we're not going to tell that here. Just go watch the video. What was your reaction when someone says, I want to make your movie? Make a movie about you. I think uh, before I even speak about the movie, as the intro said, I just want to go back to uh, maybe a few more years back in the history when I attended my first Inc. conference in, at Bombay. I always uh, believe when the world looks up to me and says, Shrikant, you can do, you cannot do anything. I look up to the world and say, I can do anything. And over these last uh, five odd years, I think in my own um, casket, I have been showing what I mean at every step of my career. When I met my godfather and a friend and a partner, Ravi Manta, in 2015, he told me one thing, hey look, you are a piece of suitable carbon that can be carved into a diamond, but I am going to take that sword and cut you into a diamond and introduce you to the world not as an aspirant, but as an achiever. I didn't believe him that day, but he really meant it. And he had been with me as a pillar of my success all through these eight and odd years, be it uh, even in my most difficult times or even in my glorious times. This is where I really learned conferences like Inc. Are, can give you right mentors, right support, right well-wishers, who can help you elevate yourself to the next level of success. And that day, when I ha gave my first Inc. talk, I didn't even knew that it would become a big hit. I was trembling with my both legs on the stage, don't know what to speak, but that day changed the whole uh, public appearance for Shrikant Bola. My first Arangetram did not only become a big hit, but also became a benchmark for what I speak everywhere I go. So this is what Inc. can do in everybody's life. And as Lakshmi said, whenever someone throws at a challenge, I tell people, let me bring it on and work hard. Let me help the world succeed. I strongly believe if you are if you have strong will and resolution, the whole world will help you succeed. Yeah. So, Tushar, tell us, when did you first know about Srikanth? And tell us a little bit about actually f before Srikanth, tell your journey that led you to Srikanth. So actually, I made my first film called Sankhya. It was about two shooter ladies at the age of 60 they started. They used to stay in Haryana where you could not even pick up your gungat. And they started shooting at the age of 60, 65, and they won some 350 medals. And that's the film that I made on Tapsi and Bhumi. But before that, I must tell you that because what he is saying, I saw his video of Ink on Facebook. And uh, I wanted to make Shrikant Bola my first film. I tried chasing him. I said, uh, but he used to never pick up my phone. Then I got his manager's number. They, she also used to not pick up my phone. Then I said, I'm from NDTV. I want to interview you. He said, yeah, yeah, NDTV, I will give the interview. So I tried my luck there also, there, there also I could not meet him. Then I made um, Sankhya and then somehow, but I, it, that story had stuck in my head that I want to make Srikant Bola. So I, then I tried to, because Facebook those days is a big help. You can actually find out things. That's where I met the great guy who helped me make this movie. If the movie is made today, is because of Ravi Manta. Like he said, he made this movie possible. I connected with him on Facebook. And I called him up. I said, uh, I want to make this movie on Srikanth, but I can't get hold of him. So he said, I'm very sorry. We've already given the rights away to somebody else. My heart broke. I still remember it was a Diwali, Diwali day. And they said they had given the, given the rights away to a very big director called Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra. I said, no, this is not, I'm not 100%. They won't give it to me if they've given it to Rakesh Om Prakash Mehra. But Ravi being Ravi said, you know, you are astounding. So, so like you are so thrilled about it. Why don't you come and meet us? So I went to Hyderabad with a dejected heart. 
I stayed with Ravi for three days. I moved, roamed around in his car, sat at the back seat while he was doing his business on the phone. He didn't even talk to me. Those three days, absolutely he didn't talk to me. We, then in the end, Ravi has his restaurant. He said, uh, I'm going to the airport. We'll have lunch together, then you can go to the airport. We have a business meeting. You won't believe this. So the, in the meeting, there were some bankers that he was meeting, some people who were investing in some funds. They asked, he introduced, Ravi introduced me. This guy didn't introduce me at all because he didn't care about me those days. Uh, and now I don't care about him. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Ravi introduced me to them. And they said, yo, you're Tushar Hiranandani. And they said, they were from Hyderabad. They said, we don't see Hindi movies. But my daughter saw this film called Sand Ki Aak, and then she took the entire women folk and the women folk took all of us. And what a fantastic movie and they went on and on. And then I said, thank you so much and I left. I said, bye Shrikan. And uh, Ravi and we were both going to Bombay that day. Suddenly I get this message on my phone, voice message, that if you made Sand Ki Aak such a good film, I'm sure you'll make Shrikant even better. And I'll make sure you get Shrikant Bola. He sent me a voice note. That's the first time he spoke to me properly, I think. <laughs> so that's how I got Srikanth. Thank goodness for the work that you did. I mean, I must say one thing about Srikanth is like he's a tough cookie, you know, he's not easily accessible. I remember first time we were arranging his travel and we said, uh, do you need someone else to travel with you? He's like, why? We're like, oh, okay, fine. <laughs> you, know, you know something, he's so upset because he could not do makeup before coming on the stage now. He kept on eating my head, where do, where do I get my makeup done? <laughs> so he's super. And I must say that we've talked about this of um, Shrikanth is like never takes no for an answer. Finally, he said, I got tired of fighting with the system. They don't want to take me into engineering school here. I decided to go to MIT. So his second choice is MIT. You know, so that's the kind of person he is. So tell me, Shrikanth, both of you, about so what was the experience like for you, Shrikanth? Somebody wanting to know every detail about you. That was the first thing, actually, I didn't respond. The reason is, you know, you need to invest a lot of time. First thing is, I don't uh, think big about myself. Uh, I think that's, some, that's something that has come to me naturally. When, um, N when NDTV office called me that they want to give me an award called Indian of the Year in 2015, I said, please find better people than me. I'm just taking off. I'm trying to do some climate change related stuff here. I'm trying to set up a recycling company in India because uh, I have learned so much in the US about how to make paper from municipal waste and how to create wealth out of waste, take pharma effluents into industrial chemicals or take fly ash into mineral products or how to recycle water into usable uh, elements or how to basically turn each and everything that is pretty much wasted or for example, uh, recyc unrecyclable plastic into fuel oil. So all these thoughts were running around in my mind uh, from that time onward. So I told them, look, I'm just trying to do something which I never know whether it will become a success or not, but why do you want me, honor me as Indian of the Year? Because it's a big title. They, but they persisted. And you know, the immediate thing is to go to Ravi because from day one we had this understanding, you do the business, I take care of the PR and branding and other issues. So he actually, guides whether to take up the invitation or not take up the invitation. That's why precisely Tushar must have gone to him and then <laughs> he made me to come on my uh, knees and say okay for the film. Yeah. So I think I, I don't think big about myself but what I, as Ravi always says, we should prove as an achiever not as an aspirant. I truly believe in that uh, word and I always aspire big things and work behind the stage and then come on the stage. Because it's not that easy to run a manufacturing company against the big bureaucracy and bit of a, cor a corruption and a red tapeism and a lot of challenges. Every day and night you face challenges. And we were talking about COVID. COVID actually threw us uh, way, uh, way behind. And then we were just crawling back to our pre-COVID situations. And I have learned so much about uh, human relations ever since COVID came in. because. Right people stayed with you, wrong people left you. I think uh, uh, situations like these will help you realize who is your real well-wisher and who, is your, uh, who can take away name from you. you. They're just with you because you have some name. But who are the real people who are with you because they love you? 
I think yeah. that is what we have learned as a team. And COVID has been a big disguise, but a blessing for us because we have thought through what we have done wrong over these years in our journey and what is our next future path. And uh, we have created beautiful uh, products that we want to bring to the world and compete with the big giants of the world. And uh, I'm enjoying the journey and uh, along with my team. So the, particularly with the movie, Tushar was really modest. He didn't say anything, but I tell you, he's a big villain. Uh, he, should, he himself should play in the movie because he bulldozed into my life and took the rights. And he chases me left and right, day and night, relentlessly till I call him back. So this is the character of a director that makes wonderful films. Because Any director who is just making a film is not making a film because he gets a remuneration. He's making something because he gets, uh, he gets happiness out of it, he's passionate about it, and he wants to make it beautiful and beautiful. That should last forever. And that is the trade I have seen in Tushar. He is very committed man and committed to his work and lifestyle and the problems. If I say I'm running into this problem, he finds out a solution. That is the beauty behind this piece of character. Quickly tell us when is the movie coming out? What do you what would you like to see happen? The movie is coming out next year. So just before we wrap up, I have to tell you something. So like you said, how did you prepare for the film? So I chased him. I used to call him. He used to not even tell me what happened. Then I had to call up Ravi. Then at last when the movie was announced, he believed that the movie is happening. So he was called to Bombay for a picture opportunity, which he came running. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. he came running for that. And we kept him in a... <laughs> We kept him in a hotel called Sea Princess, which is just at the beach. Yes. And that is the first time he met my writers. And he wa we were sitting and he walked in and he said, the sunset looks so lovely for me, doesn't it, Tushar? And he was talking to us normally. And my writers actually asked me, is he really visually impaired? And uh, I said, he is. But yeah, you know, the best part about him is that we all have sight, but Shrikan Bola has a vision. Yes. So when the movie comes out, we, we, uh, you'll get to see what an amazing job, uh, you know, the director got out of uh, Rajkumar Rao. So wait for the movie. So here, one more time from Ink Productions. Movie about Shrikant Bolla. Thanks, Tushar. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.